white Road Boss came in three different models. The white Road Boss conventional version, Road Commander cab over version, and Road Expediter low cab forward version. Smash the like button for today's subject is the 1977 white Road Boss conventional version made by Neo Scale Models. Hi, I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, back with another episode of Toy Talk. Today's episode is centered around Thomas H. White, one of the pioneers in manufacturing in America. Mr. White founded the White Manufacturing Company in 1858 in Templeton, Massachusetts. On incorporation in 1876, White Company became the White Sewing Machine Company. You thought I was going to talk about the White Road Boss. Well, I am. But first, I found out that the White Motor Company had its origins as a sewing machine manufacturing company. So, I thought I would share this tidbit of information with you. Now, on to the White Motor Company. White Motors actually started with steam. In 1900, Thomas White's son, Roland, developed a steam engine suitable for automobiles. Using a corner of one of his father's factories, Roland started building steam-powered automobiles. White's automobiles followed the trend to keep up with the competition. Steam gave way to gasoline automobiles, then on to trucks. Trucks became the focus of the White Motor Company when diesel engines came on the scene. Now we get to the White Road Boss. White Motor Company was floundering after the breakup of their agreement with Freightliner. White survived well into the decade of the 1970s thanks to the son of longtime GM president and former Ford Motor Company president. The son is credited for briefly bringing White back to life. During this time period, a new line of truck models were introduced to the trucking industry. This line of trucks included the White Road Boss, the White Road Commander, and the White Road Expediter. The first and second generation of road rigs were released throughout the 70s and eventually evolved into the White GMC family. The 1980s found White continuing to produce the Road Boss line of trucks, with the addition of two more models of the popular main versions. The main models were the White Road Boss and the White Road Commander, as well as their Expediter. The new additions are the second series, called the White Road Boss 2 and the White Road Commander 2. White trucks were involved with the manufacture of several other truck makes and models, auto car being one. This ultimately proved to be too much for the company to handle. You might say they bit off more than they could chew. As a result, white trucks declared bankruptcy in 1980. After being bought by Volvo, a new venture under the Volvo White Truck Corporation would continue to sell vehicles under the white nameplate as high cab overs. In 1997, the white nameplate was permanently retired with a renowned reputation for some of the most revolutionary rigs ever built. More about white trucks in a future video. Now, let's go on and head over to the rock quarry and talk about Neo Scale Models 1977 White Road Boss. And here we go guys, this is Neo Scale Models 164 Scale 1977 White Road Boss Road Tractor. They also did this as a tow truck. The only tow truck they did in 64 scale was the Road Boss. 
item number on this one is 64015. This was one of the original early releases that they made in 64 scale. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that blue with the pinstriping that starts out wider and gets narrower up to the white on the side of the truck and the sleeper. Really, really cool. It has a nice box sleeper on the back with a window in it. Now there is no window, it is just a black tampo, but it looks like a window there. There's a door handle to get in, and that is just molded into the sleeper. But this door handle here on the door is an individual part, as is the grab bar beside the door. Exhaust stacks here are also individual parts. So is the mirror and the oil filter. That's the big oil filter on this guy. It has a smallish fuel tank here in front of the steps. And these would be steps with battery boxes. There's diamond plate on each of them. This would be a long nose road boss. And it has the road boss insignia there. That is a photo etched part. Because it's on such a flat piece, it's probably not likely to ever come off, but be careful with it. There's a turn signal here on the fender and really nice molded fenders and the mold in for the headlights. It has no quarter fenders back here, but it does have mud flaps. What's cool about this one is it's riding on five spoke Dayton rear wheels that have silver rims, silver spokes with a little blue cap, and then 10 hole buds on the front. Very common back then was to have Dayton's and then buds. It was a cool look and I'm glad that uh, Neo did that in their models because it's not something that you would have ever gotten from DCP or anybody else, a mix of wheels. But it was common back in the day. Unusual for Neo is this one does have some real chrome parts. This grill surround is all chrome. It's got white molded in and then tampoed over in black right there at the top of the grill it has a nice grill which is a photo etch big photo etch piece right there the bumper is also chrome plated it has driving lights rectangular type with seal beam pattern on them hanging under the bumper it doesn't have seal beam patterns but it has regular uh, individual jewel style lights in the headlights single rounds on each side and you can see the turn signals there and there. Tipping him up. It's very hard to see inside this cab, but there is a set of black seats in there, black dashboard, and black steering wheel. Great, that dark cab and then black interior. Real hard to see, but oh well, that's what they did. Over on this side, you'll see it has the air intake right here. Big, big air filter, really White had some unusual air filters and air intakes compared to everybody else. Most people ran the turbo type round cylinders, but these guys ran square boxes, these weird round things. They did the job, but they just looked different than anybody else. Also on this side, you can see it has a great big fuel tank. Whereas the other one had the little fuel tank, it was about that long. This one got a full length fuel tank. Diamond plate steps there and there for the passenger to climb up and then grab bars, uh, door handle, mirrors. The windows are vacuum formed on this guy. They're outlined in black. And then there's a little black bar on this one to show off the wind wing. Another sleeper window here, but no door on this side because the door is on the other side. The wheels are the same. Turn signal here and then another white road boss insignia right there on the side of the hood graphics are all the same really nice the only thing i wish they had done was it was common to have short stacks but i wish the muffler was taller and the stacks were a little bit taller but this was common back in the day to have stacks down low on above the uh, sleeper so that's okay around to the back you'll see it has brake lights individual dual style brake lights right there Mud flaps, one on each side, really nice. They're black and they're molded in. Not quite sure where they got the pattern, but they're there, really nice. Fifth wheel. Now, this very, very early release, the fifth wheel was not quite big enough to hold a DCP pin. 
So I honed everyone out before I shipped them. That way that people would actually be able to hitch up a trailer to this. It wasn't off by much, but just enough that that pin wouldn't fit. Back of the sleeper, it has all this nice rib detailing. Plus it has the little lines that start with a wider and get narrower and narrower and narrower to there. White and then blue. Really, really good. It's a resin cab with a resin sleeper sitting on a die cast frame. Up to the top here, you can see the individual bullet style roof lights. It painted them in silver to look like they're aluminum. And then it has a little bit of orange paint on the tips to make it look like it has amber lenses. They also painted the individual air horns the aluminum color, just like everything else. They did some chrome, but mostly everything was just painted aluminum. Now, what's really different about this one is the way they mounted the windshield wipers. They're really actually glued down to the cowl. You see the cowl grill, and they're glued there, and they touch the windshield. The wiper blade touches the windshield, but it's not really up on the window like the other ones. So these will be much harder to get off, to knock off on accident, but you can do it. Believe me, you can do it. It's got a big wide black stripe down the center of the white hood and then two narrower ones on the other ridges on the hood. Then to tilt the hood, it's got an individual piece painted aluminum, a handle right there. Really, really cool that they did it that way instead of molding it in, making it a separate part. Overall, I mean, for the first release, this was amazing for a truck. The only mistake that I ever saw was fifth wheel was just a little bit too small in diameter, that fifth wheel hole to hold a trailer. Coming underneath, you got a tie rod for the front steering, but it doesn't steer. Simple straight axle, which is just fine with me. You can see it says made in China on the front axle, spring suspension, and you got your engine detail right here at the bottom of it, the transmission detail. And look at the exhaust coming out and going around to the mufflers on both sides. Really cool. Down here, you can really see the difference in the fuel tanks. Look at that great big one on the passenger side and a little bitty one on the driver's side. There's your air tanks here, and then there's another air tank there. It says 164 white road boss, 1977, tampoed on this frame rail. Neo scale models is tampoed on that one. There's a drive shaft coming up here to the front differential, another drive shaft to the rear differential, and then torsion bar suspension. Really nice detail on the rear suspension, drive shaft, axles, everything. Also, nice vintage uh, bias ply tread pattern. Since this guy has that nice sleeper box on it, I thought the DCP dry van trailer would be great. So here it is, hooked up to the Diecast Promotions 64 scale, 40 foot vintage dry van. Doesn't that look nice? It is the Neo scale models. 1977 white road boss with a sleeper set up as a road tractor hooked up to the DCP 40 foot vintage dry van. A heck of a great combination that you would have seen back on the road. And what do you think of that paint job? Isn't that sharp? White Motor Company certainly added many innovations to trucking during its fairly long run. Ultimately, economic conditions, poor management, and too many brands competing for the same market became too much for the company. It's a shame to see such a great company go down, but the white trucks are still remembered today, so their legacy continues on. While this Neo White Road Boss is sold out, I still have a few other Neo 64 scale trucks left on my site, so Go on and grab them with the link down below before it's too late, as Neo has shut down. Also, I've got another link below where you can get a free checklist of all the Neo scale models 164 scale trucks. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please go on and smash the like button, share this video with your followers, drop your comments below. And subscribe to my channel for more great product reviews and histories of the real companies. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'll be back soon with another episode of Toy Talk.